We all know that Australians are the best at mining and crafts, so it's no surprise that I'm an actual expert at non-IRL Minecraft. When I'm not griefing noobs or slaying mobs, I'm down to boat fish and chill. Minecraft boats are fast, furious, fun and break just about every law of physics. 2 metres in length, 28.8 km an hour top speed on water, and those oars spin at 150 RPM. It should be easy to recreate one of these boats IRL, right? You don't need the latest hardware, software or intelligence to knock up a 3D model of a Minecraft boat, but there are some things to consider. CFD modelling indicates that the hull is going to perform very poorly in water, but I was keen to keep the design true to the game. The hull will house all of the bits to make it go. Our captain People call me Steve. will do the fishing, and an oar mechanism will make it all look the part. I've built airboats, paddle boats and boats with thrusters, but this build will be different. All of the parts that are wooden in the game are 3D printed using wood PLA. That's a mixture of plastic and wood fibres. It's not my favourite filament to work with because it does tend to string, but we can tidy that up later. That's the two largest parts of the hull now printed at just shy of 60 hours. I'm going to start some smaller parts of the hull printing now and get to tidying up and sanding these larger parts. Wood PLA sands really nicely and will even take wood stains if you want to alter your colour. Two-part epoxy adhesive was used throughout the build to join parts. The heat set inserts were used to allow the deck to be removed later on for access. This is the point that I realised that I just spent so much time 3D printing something to look like wood when I could have just made it from wood in the first place. Moving on to the drivetrain. This is the motor mount that will be fitted to the brush motor and the other gear that I salvaged from this toy RC boat. Hopefully, they're up to the challenge. The ESC in the toy boat was no good, so I picked up the cheapest ESC with reverse that I could find, and then I went ahead and wired everything up. Looking inside the hull before we move on with the build, we have a 370 size brushed motor and drive shaft that we removed from the toy boat earlier. This is a brushed ESC, which provides the power to the motor from this three cell LiPo battery over here. In the middle, we have a receiver. That's a six channel receiver. We're using four of those channels at the moment. We've got a servo here, which will be used to steer the boat once we've fitted a rudder later on. Over here, this is a receiver controlled switch connected to this little tiny six volt motor and gearbox. Uh, and that will be used to provide the rowing motion for the oars. And up here, we have another full size servo. This one is used to give some movement to Steve. It's raining cats and dogs. I masked off the hull to get it ready for the waterproofing process. I applied two coats of polyester resin using a roller and a paintbrush for the tighter areas. Initially, this was just going to be for the parts of the hull that were in contact with the water. But after I removed the masking, I realised just how much the resin improved the finish on the wood PLA. So I went ahead and added it to some other parts to make it really pop. I fitted the prop and rudder hardware to the boat. The rudder has more surface area to ensure that the boat turns even at slow speeds. Now it's time to print our captain. He's printed from PLA Plus and I tried to keep everything super lightweight so that I didn't run into problems with the boat's centre of gravity later on. This servo provides movement at Steve's waist that will come in handy on the water. I used double sided tape to add his facial features. Turns out the servo was a bit dodgy, so I had to swap it out for a 360 servo. Steve is fastened to the bow deck. Next up, it's onto the oar mechanism. This design worked flawlessly first go and absolutely did not require a stupid amount of revisions. It's powered by this six volt micro motor and gearbox with a 210 to one ratio. That's further reduced with another two to one added on top, which should give it about 70 RPM at the crank, which is about half of the actual in-game Minecraft uh, rowing speed. One of the tricky things with this design was the ball and sockets. So these will be attached to the oars and that's how it's gonna spin them around and allow the change of angle. I think these are gonna be a weak link. So I've printed them in a way that they can be replaced fairly easily if they do break. The oars are printed in wood PLA and the pieces are joined using carbon fibre rods and two-part epoxy. This was the original design for the oar. It's pretty much to scale from the game, but I was encountering problems with the oar mechanism. It was just too heavy. So I got rid of that design, redid it, and I came up with this one. It's a little bit smaller and I've changed the print settings to make it lighter. The fishing rod and fishing items use inset magnets that I salvaged from an old brushless motor. 
I realised at this point that I needed to give Steve another degree of freedom to make the whole fishing thing work. So I revised my design to add a servo to his shoulder. That dodgy servo was still giving me problems though. It's still raining, so we can't take it out just yet, but let's have a look at the finished boat. Head over to things.com to check out this model in more detail. You can see how it all works and fits together, view it in AR in your own space, and download it for free. The sun is out and it's finally time to test it. Okay, here we go. Well, he floats. Well, that didn't last long. I damaged the dog bone on the end of the drive shaft, but I popped the spare one in, wound the power down to just 40% and we were off again. may be wondering if the oars alone propel the boat. In circles, yes. Time to fish. Now there's definitely a technique to this and it took me a bit to get the hang of. You need to finesse the sticks to balance your boat speed and direction with Steve's arm and waist movements. There's a bit going on. It's actually a lot of fun. Then I had to work out how to get the caught items off the rod. Very elegant. Let's talk about performance. We saw in the design stage how inefficient the hull looked. You can clearly see this in action by the wall of water that the boat had to push around, and this definitely contributed to the drive shaft failure. But I'd also overpowered it with a three cell LiPo battery. After winding the power down to the ESC, there was no real change in speed because of the diminishing returns from the inefficient hull. As for the top speed, it clocks just 3.6 kilometers an hour. But if we consider that the boat is about one seventh the scale of an in-game boat, then we're actually only just shy of the 28.8 kilometer hour top speed in terms of scale speed. Not bad. But where this build really excelled was the fun factor. It's kind of mesmerizing to watch it move around. Fishing is a blast and it's just generally silly. <laughs> 